Hey guys, Helen Hart Smith here again from the Heart of the Witches Path YouTube channel. Hope you're having a good day. I am. <laughs> so I wanted to, I've been thinking about um, doing some videos on like individual tarot cards for a long time. Um, so I've been kind of think I took the time to like really kind of think about, you know, um, what did I want to talk about? Um, did I want to do a comparison? I kind of want to look at tarot cards and like kind of do a comparison to them. For any of you out there that that read cards who are into tarot and things like that, then you may be um, like me. I own, I'm kind of a collector, but not really. Um, I only have space for so much in my house so it's not like I can have you know a shelf full of tarot cards but I definitely like tarot cards I think the artwork on a lot of them are like insane especially in the last few years we've had some really great decks that have come out um but you know i I I'm a little selective about what I buy, and I've been trying to do a little bit more um, review type videos here, um, just so you can, you know, maybe get to know a deck that I really like a little bit more and things like that. But I wanted to up the ante a little bit, and let's let's talk about the cards. The, the depictions and the meanings as you move from one deck to another. And are they similar? Are they different? Are the, are the meanings the same or are they different? Do they have a theme um, and stuff like that? And so I was like, well, this is kind of interesting. And so I thought, you know, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take three decks and I'm just going to compare them. And we'll start with the Major Arcana. And I'll do a video like for each card. And the, and let's look at these three decks and see if there's similarities in the card depictions. Are there similarities in the meanings? Um, and are they, or are they completely different? So that's what I want to kind of do with this series. And so the decks that I decided to use are the Rider Weight deck because I feel for me personally, I know that people have like some really strong views on the Rider Weight deck and that's cool. But um my thought process is the Rider Weight is kind of like the the beginning the most popular, the uh, almost kind of like the Holy Grail, the um, the symbology that you see in the Rider Waite deck, you um, can see those themes throughout many tarot decks. And so I thought that I wanted to use the Rider Waite as kind of like my baseline. That's kind of like the thing that we're going to compare um, other decks to kind of a thing. Not saying that Rider Weight is the best. Um, not saying that Rider Weight is beat all, end all, nothing like that. Rider Weight is actually the first deck that I ever owned. It's the deck that I learned to read tarot on. And so um, I wanted to use that as like a basic, basic baseline type thing um, to compare as we kind of look at these decks. So the other deck that I chose is the Steampunk Tarot by Barbara Moore and it's illustrated by Allie Fell. Um, I've got the big the big book here. Um, so this is one of my favorite, well this is probably my favorite deck. I love 
the steampunk depictions. I'm a big steampunk fan, and um, I really like the ease in which you can use the book um, or not use the book and stuff like that. And so that was the that's one of that's the second deck that I decided to use for these videos. And then the third deck that I want to use is the um, the Night Sun Tarot, and they are um, let's see. Um, instructions by Fabio Lestrani. So this is actually the book that comes with the deck. So that's um, the little book there. Um, so, and then, oh, just to make things even, here we have the writer weight. Let's hold it a little straight there. Um, so, yeah, so these are the three, and I wanted, I didn't want to go crazy because, you know, I have a ton of decks, um, but I wanted to kind of keep things simple, and, you know, three is a magic number. So let's kind of look at three, and, and I didn't, like... I didn't pre-plan out anything. I'm just kind of taking these decks one card at a time and we're gonna start, we're gonna do a, a video per card and we're gonna start with the major arcana, work our way through that, see how we're feeling. Do we wanna go to the minor arcana after that and, and kind of see what we're doing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the camera down so that we can take a look at the deck at the cards and I'm going to give you the meanings that come in the books for each of these decks so you'll understand what the the maker of or makers of these decks were intending to use for this card and I'll talk about I may talk about my own impressions um, and things like that because I was a big book user <laughs> from the beginning and I'm trying to move away from that um, now and so let's see where this journey takes us and let's see can we learn anything um, about the differences in tarot and how does it make us feel about tarot and are they different are they the same you know, whatever. Let's see what happens, okay? Okay, so here we've got our three cards, and I have them face down for right now. Um, let's go ahead and kind of flip them over one at a time, and we'll kind of take a detailed look at each of the cards and, and then do some comparison, some contrasting with what we see with the cards, and then we can take a look at the books and see what the makers intended for that card to mean, okay? So let's start with the Rider weight card. So here we have the Fool, and I'm going to try zooming in. Let's see if we can get a better look at the Fool. There we go. Okay, so here we have the Fool. The first thing that I notice about the Fool card is, first of all, all that yellow on the background, um, it just looks very bright to me. Um, we have here, of course, we have the Fool. Um, he is, he has a, a traveling pack, so to speak, that is kind of um, on his shoulder. This is a very um, traditional hobo um, uh, imagery for me. Um, so that just makes me think of someone that's on the road, basically. Um, so that's really interesting. Um, another thing that comes or that stands out to me is the, um, the rose or the flower. I, I, I'm assuming it's a rose. It may or may not be, but there's a flower in his turned up hand here. I also see a little white dog here that seems to be um, following him, or maybe he's his traveling companion. Um, I'm not really sure, um, but there's definitely a little white dog. And then another thing that stands out to me would be the mountains here in the background. And so that's kind of another um, indicator to me that there is, um, there's a a journey of some kind to be taken, okay? Uh, we also, too, have the sun up here in the corner. So here is our kind of baseline imagery for what does the fool 
look like, okay? So I don't wanna mess around too much with shaking the camera around. So let's slide this over and let's take a look at, this would be the Steampunk deck um, card. So here we have uh, depicted a chimney sweep. That looks a little dark in this frame, so I'm gonna give us a little light illumination here so that maybe you can see um, some of the details better. I'm gonna use my, um, my camera. Let's see if this, yeah, that will give us a little bit more detail, I guess, without like completely drowning out the card. Um, so um, you see here we have a chimney sweep and he is obviously, if you look at the background here, he is on a rooftop and there seems to be um, large buildings from the city of London in the background here, which very much reminds me of the mountains here in the original Fool card. Maybe let's kind of try to bring them in together. Yeah, that might be kind of cool. Um, and. Uh, and the next thing I notice is that the chimney sweep is, um, again, something that, is, that we see in the, the Rider Waite Fool card. Um, there's something across his shoulder. And this isn't a traveling pack necessarily, but it is his chimney sweep tools. So that's kind of interesting. Oh, that might not be like the best thing here. Um, and then down here, what is this? Oh, that light is just really not working for me. Sorry. Um, <laughs> that wasn't helpful. Um, down here in the corner, we have a little white dog. Looky here, a companion. Um, so, you know, definitely a singular person. Um, this gentleman in the steampunk card almost appears to be, you know, on the job where the fool appears to be, you know, on the road, um, that kind of stands out to me. Um, but there's definitely, um, <sighs> we've got a nighttime, which is a, a difference between the two, um, where this is bright and sunny, this is definitely dark and nighttime. Um, that's interesting to me. Um, I, I definitely don't necessarily get, like, um, images of beginnings with this uh, particular card with the with the steampunk version like I do here um, but you know that's just me too so there's the steampunk version of the fool let's slide him out I want to keep the the rider weight fool in frame and let's take a look at the night sun card Okay, so here we have the Night Sun Tarot Fool card next to the Rider Waite. Um, definitely a lone figure, again, depicted in this card. Um, the In general, this Fool card falls in very, very much with um, the rest of the Night, Night Sun deck. It's a very... Um, how do I want to say this? It's a very, um, it's an interesting deck because of the way things are depicted. Um, so it's, um, there's definitely like a lot of predominant colors in this deck. Um, so, uh, and, but I guess that's not really what I wanted to talk about. Um, we have the lone person. We have a dog. Um, depicted here next to the figure. Um, again, we have the stick on the shoulder with a bag. So that's very similar to what we have here in the, uh, the Rider weight deck. Um, there seems to be coming from this corner of the card, um, coming downward, there seems to be some kind of a light source. Now we don't necessarily see a sun um, but there is definitely a light source. And this card in general is fairly dark. So I don't know if, again, not really sure if that light source is the sun or if it's just light. Okay. Um, we definitely have to, it's kind of hard to make it out 
um, unless you're kind of like really close and, and seeing the card. Um, there's a lot of kind of like wood structure -y. I don't even no, I don't even want to call it a structure. It, it's like it's wood. It's almost like debris. Maybe that's like the better word in the background here that could be the um, the artist's attempt at recreating some kind of a skyline. Um, I don't think that um, I don't think that this individual is on a rooftop like we saw in the steampunk deck. I think that um, that he's inside somewhere, and this is kind of debris that's in the background. Um, so not really sure exactly what that intention is, but um, when I look at this card, um, I am definitely seeing some kind of a journey because again, there's this this pack that is um, that is a general um, going somewhere type um, item. Um, like we see here. So there's a, a journey of some kind. Um, but yeah, that's, that's like the big thing that I get from that particular card. And that's, that's kind of about it. So that's kind of like showing the three cards. So, or kind of like taking a look at the three cards and kind of comparing the imagery. So what I want to do is I want to pull out again no not forward or not let's pull out and let's have all three cards in the frame again so let's look at what the makers of these decks wanted or intended the meaning for each of them to be and again let's start with that rider weight card that's in the center so the fool now, one thing that's that I find that's interesting uh, when we deal with um, different tarot decks is that a lot of your traditional decks will have the upright meaning and they'll have the reversed meaning. Um, and so that's definitely true with Rider Waite. Um, the Steampunk Tarot does not use that system it uh when they talk about the card they only talk about um its meanings and they can include a lot of time i guess i should back up for those of you not familiar if a deck deals with the upright and reversed a lot of times the upright meaning is kind of like positive aspects and the um, reversed meaning is more negative and so depending on how the card was laid in the spread would um, would determine which meaning you would be looking at. When you look at the steampunk deck they're going to talk about um, positive and negative because both aspects influence the situation and the position where the particular card is. And the Night Sun Tarot is uh, the same as the Steampunk. These are our more contemporary decks, the Steampunk and the Night Sun. And so I think that's probably where we see a lot of those changes from the more traditional having the upright and reversed to the newer ones not necessarily doing that, but dealing with everything all together. So for the Fool in the Rider Waite, we're looking at folly, mania, extravagance, intoxication, delirium, frenzy, and bereavement. Um, so that's the upright meaning. The reverse meaning talks about negligence, abs absence, uh, distribution, and carelessness. Now that, those... Um, those meanings really don't speak to um, what the card is depicted. Now I can see folly, and this these are just my opinions, okay? I can see, um, because we're talking about the fool, I can see where folly and mania, and for that, that matter, even intoxication and delirium can um, be associated with a fool. Um, but I really don't see 
those qualities in the depiction of this particular card. Um, again, that is my opinion. Um, take it take from it what you will, I guess, I will say. Now, let's look at the steampunk card next. Um, this particular card, the core meaning is the moment before the first step is taken. Now, I find that interesting because when I looked at this card, that is the feeling that I got from looking at the Rider Waite card. Um, and I, and if you'll remember, I said, I really don't get the feeling of a journey beginning. Um, so that's interesting that those things were associated here. And I feel that there is a journey of some sorts um, happening with this Night Sun card as well. Um, but coming back to this Steampunk card, um, it talks about how the Fool card is filled with conundrums and contradictions. So the chimney sweep that we see depicted here as the Fool is at the beginning. Um, an innocent with no life experience and no wisdom. At least not the kind of wisdom or experiences this world values. Now, I find that kind of interesting because I guess when I look at a chimney sweep, I don't necessarily... Um, see a chimney sweep as being, you know, naive or innocent. Um, I think that that just might be a matter of uh, a chimney sweep uh, being depicted as the fool because this is a steampunk deck. And so a chimney sweep in London during the Victorian era, that's definitely um, a, a person that you can come into contact with. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Um, it goes on to talk about how the fool is the soul at the beginning of its journey in this life. Um, it's stepping into this life. A mere moment before the beginning. Oh, so that's interesting. So before the fool jumps down from the heavens into his new life, anything is possible. So that's interesting because as someone who might be wanting to learn the tarot, um, you know, or someone who is seeking a reading, I could see where um, you would want to have a card that would kind of explain that situation in a reading. So that's interesting and that makes sense to me. Um, and then this also talks about the little white dog, as we see here. Um, the little white dog is, um, let's see, the light that helps the fool find its way home exists in the form of a little white dog, a faithful companion who both warns of danger and eagerly leads toward happy adventures. So if, um, a fool, if the fool comes into your reading... Um, you're about to embark on a journey that plays an important role in your soul's experience in this world. Um, so this card represents decisions that may seem foolish to others um, and maybe even to yourself, but you must follow your inner light and listen to your inner little white dog. Well, now, see, I like that makes sense to me. That definitely makes sense to me. So that's interesting. That kind of goes along with, again... Um, that goes along with what I was thinking I, by looking at the depiction of the writer weight version, um, but not necessarily upon looking at this card as it stands. But yes, it does, the more you think about it. So that's interesting to me. So let's take a look now at the Night Sun card and see what the maker intended for that particular card. So this card talks about energy, uh, carefreeness, news, madness, travel, travel again. So that's interesting. Uh, freedom, escape, intuition, impulsiveness, indecision, hesitation, gesture, and incur incoherency and delirium, which we saw delirium in the meaning here. So we have some definite uh, similarities in these two cards. Um, so 
um, this one poses the question, what must I free myself of while traveling along my path so I can channel my energies more effectively? Um, so all in all, I can kind of see some similarities in the three meanings. There's definitely journeys. There's definitely um, starting something, um, start starting something that's important. Um, and so um, I would say that while they aren't the same meanings verbatim, Having looked at three different cards and, and compared them, I would say that regardless now of what deck I would be using, um, I'm kind of cementing in myself when I look at the Fool, I'm going to be thinking about new journeys, starting off on something that's important for your soul and important for your life's work as you, you know, spiritually uh, go through your journey in this um, existence. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. Okay, so there we got, there we have a little comparison and contrasting for the Fool cards for these three decks that I want to take a look at. Um, what are you thinking? Is this interesting to you? Um, I'm kind of intrigued and I'm willing to share, so let me know what you think. If you liked this video um, or learned something from it, then give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscription button. It's somewhere in that area. We love to have you come back. <laughs> um, what are your thoughts on the Fool card? What does the Fool mean to you? What's your favorite deck that you use um, in your tarot reading if you are a reader, if you have a favorite or a couple of favorites or what have you? I, I want to know these things. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, all of social media links are going to be in the description box. So the Facebook page, uh, the Instagram for both myself and for Kathy. Um, so go ahead and check those out. You can also uh, feel free to drop me an email at heartofthewitchespath at yahoo.com. That's going to be it for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thanks for walking the path for a little while with me. Until next time, blessed be.